I know why you're here, and I hope I don't disappoint you. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the last Monday of March. It is the 27th. Now, on all these shows, what I do is focus in on OTC and penny stocks, particularly ones that can make us some money. Now, when I say penny stocks, I'm referring to any stock under five bucks, and it doesn't matter what market it's on. It's all about price. Now, when I do my research on these stocks, I used to go straight to the news. I'd look for hot news, and when the market was strong and we had a lot of volume, you could almost count on that news to move the stock. Well, it isn't that way anymore. A lot of hot news is going to waste. So I've changed things up. Since people are responding to charts, that's where I'm doing my research. I'm looking at charts first, and I'm doing it blind. I'm not choosing what company to look at. I'm just pulling up a scan, and I'm going down through that scan looking at every single chart until I find a chart that looks hot or warm. It looks like it may have a breakout coming on, or a lot of volume is building up, or maybe there's just a big bounce happening. Whatever it is, those are the sort of stocks we're going to be looking at. Now, when I am doing research on these stocks, and it doesn't matter if they're on the major exchange or the OTC, this is the site I use for all of it, the otcmarkets.com website. Now, I love this site for one main reason, because they update it every single day by FINRA and the SEC. And it's not like they update it once a day. It's being updated all through the day. So I love coming here to get all my news. All that news comes from the OTC. There's about uh, eight days worth there right now. Oldest is at the top, newest is at the bottom. I've read all that news, that is prime news. So if you haven't had time to go through it like I do, there's about eight days worth right there. And I get all of that right here. Just by clicking that, the news comes in through the day as it's being released. Not one piece of news do I get anywhere else. I get uh, corporate actions here, which means I see the tier changes if they're coming off the expert market. I get to see splits. At the very beginning of the morning, they tell you all this stuff that's been done. So you really keep up with current information. And they bring in a lot of information for the major exchange stocks. Now, it's not made for that, but it will save you a lot of time if you start your research here. You will find gaps, but initially, you're going to find your saving time and frustration. And if you don't find what you're looking for, right, the internet's always there waiting for you. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Ooh, those are all low numbers. We are hoping that this bounce is significant. Come on, baby. Oh, God, not significant enough. Our dollar volume didn't jump. Our share volume didn't jump. And they're both real low. $1.2 billion. We need to be up at $2 billion. I think we were over $1.5 sometime last week. Here we go back down. Share volume. We can't stay over $5 billion and we need to be at 10 And trades, you hear me say it every single time. We were stuck at 250000 as our floor for six months. We fell below that in February. We've been trying to get back up, but not with a lot of success. And now I see we're hovering closer to 200000 than 250. So things are looking bleak and dark. As summer comes closer, winter is approaching the OTC market. God, it's cold in here. Well, let me heat things up with some stocks that I found, and I think you may be interested in. Our first prospect comes from the major exchange, the NASDAQ. This is ticker CACO, Caravel International. She's got a lot going for her. First off, she's got a hot chart. She's got what, well, let's give it a name. Let's call it Atypical Breakout. And you know which one I'm talking about. It's my favorite breakout chart. That is when you have that 200-day SMA descending and it starts leveling out going flat. Meanwhile, the price is coming up, coming right up underneath that 200, looking for any excuse to break out and start running. She's got that kind of chart. As a matter of fact, the other two stocks we're going to look at also have that same sort of chart set up. Now, she's also got some hot news as well, but Keiko hasn't been around very long. She only came on the market in December, and she did that through a merger with a SPAC. The SPAC was called Pacifico. So we don't have a whole lot of information about her, but we got a catalyst, and we do have a hot chart. So she finished today at $1.10 with almost 3% losses. So what does this company do? Well, they've got two sectors. One they just created and one they've been doing a long time. The one they've been doing forever is international shipping with ships. 
they take big loads from uh, Africa and they move them to Asia or the United States, anything like that. But now they've got a new division and this is hot. This is very interesting. This is the CO Tech business. It is a new development building upon the existing shipping business. So they're going to be able to make more money with the shipping by doing this. It enables wood disinination during the marine time shipping process. We're talking about drying it out. With full utilization of the shipping time, the space, and the waste of heat exhaust gas from the shipping vessels. Caravelle CO2 Tech Industry has no historical operations. This is brand new and has not generated any revenue yet. Caravelle is headquartered in Singapore. Now, I jumped over to their website, and we do have some benefits to doing this. First off, kiln drying at a mill adds six weeks to lead time. So if you're going to dry the wood wherever it's at, it's going to take six weeks before you can deliver it. When you send things on a ship, most of the time they're out there for 30 to 60 days. You've got plenty of time for it to dry. When you are drying it in a kiln, it's costing you money, $120 per cubic meter. When you're doing it on a ship, it is free. So they've got all sorts of benefits to doing this. And we're going to hear more about this in that hot piece of news that I was just talking about. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Let's see what we got here. Just a little bit of increase, not much at all. Jumping from 127,000 shares a day for the last 30 days, she did 138,000 today. Still under the radar. Share structure on the company. Ooh, we got absolutely nothing here. And I didn't get anything from the financial, so I did do a search over at Google. And what did I find? Both the outstanding and the float. Our outstanding, they tell us, is 58. Float is at 50. Float is at 50. Outstanding, 58. Float, 50. I think we have a winner here. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go with 58 for the outstanding and a float of, right, 50. Let's take a look at those financials. Annuals, we got nothing here. On the quarterly, we got nothing either. But what did you expect? They just came on the market December, and the first quarter is just now finishing. So yeah, there's nothing on the books. And in case you didn't notice, they tell us that she's a shell company. And eh, 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 that's not true. It just hasn't been updated. The SPAC was a shell company. All SPACs are shell companies. None of them are making revenues. This just hasn't been updated yet because nothing's gotten into the record yet. But they are making money. Here is a news press that came out January 17th. They tell us that their unaudited revenues for 2022 were $200 million. That is up 64% compared to last year. And their unaudited earnings were $40 million for 2022, up 290% from last year. But they believe they're going to be into the big bucks here real soon. They drop a bomb on us down here. They tell us the best times for our company lie ahead as we embark on two major new market opportunities that we believe, are you ready for this, will add over a billion dollars of revenue to the company over the next several years. Do you think that CO Tech is that hot? Whew, sure sounds like it. What sort of disclosures do we have for the company? Well, these were confusing. Our most current uh, filings are these 13 G's. Now, these are good. These are when investors come in, buy enough shares of the company that they actually qualify for ownership. They get a percentage of the company. Well, all three of these are blank. I'm, I mean, there's stuff there, but it's zero, zero, zero. There's just, I don't know if they were a test or what. So really, there's no filings for us to consider. Let's take a look at that news. So we've got three pieces of news here for this year. We got one in January, which we've already covered, their record-breaking financials. And then here, we just had a piece of news come out about five days ago. They've got a presentation that's available at their website. This is a digital brochure for the layman, real easy to read. Then we've got this piece of news. This is the catalyst that I wanna jump into. This came out on the 2nd of March. They tell us here that Caravel International Group established a partnership with a U.S. corporation to manufacture wood products in Gabon, Africa for export to the United States and that the government of Gabon has granted the partnership use of 165 acres of land for the location of the lumber mill. The mill will produce wood laminate flooring 
plywood, and other wood products. The products will have a significant cost advantage over lumber products domestically produced in the United States, believe it or not, because of the cheaper lumber and the cheaper labor in Gabon but also because the African Growth and Opportunity Act will allow for duty-free import of these products into the USA. The US-based partner will fund the construction of the mill in Gabon and already has established distribution in the US to sell these products, so they're way ahead of the game. Caravelle will ship the wood products to the United States Caravelle will also dry the wood products in transit, as we were talking about, using their patent-pending Cotec system that uses recycled engine heat for the drying process, resulting in significant cost savings and a six-week reduction in lead time versus traditional kiln drying at the mill. The partners estimate that the venture will generate $200 million annual revenue within the first several years. We have had great experience working with Gabon in the past having exported lumber from there to Asia. So this is not their first rodeo. Expanding export to the United States is a logical next step that will be a big growth driver for our company in the years ahead. Yeah, I guess it must be. They're counting on billions of dollars. So there's your catalyst, folks. You've got lumber coming out of Africa that is going to be dried at a cheaper expense, going to get here quicker. It's just a win-win-win all the way around. And the chart's a winning chart. <laughs> Let's go take a look at it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, don't judge too quickly. Not until you've at least had a chance to zoom in. <laughs> This is CACO, ticker CACO, Caravelle International, and we're going to be doing all of our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You get this free from TD Ameritrade. Now, we are on a six-month, four-hour view, but that's not six months. This only goes back to December 19th when the tickers changed from Pacifico to CACO, ticker CACO. And all SPACs come on the market at $10 a share, and the SPAC was falling just before they changed the ticker. By the time they got it changed, they were at $9.36 on the 19th, and five days later, we were down here at a buck. Egad, what a fall, and I'm not quite sure why. And since time, she's been meandering up over and down under that dollar mark. But we don't have to worry about NASDAQ getting concerned. You have to be under a buck for six months for them to get worried. She hasn't even been on the market three months yet. No problems. So let's zoom in on that 200-day SMA. It has just come into the picture, but you can see she would have been falling here, and now she's leveling out. And while she was leveling out, our price started to climb, right? You can see she got on top of that 20, got spunky, got some determination, put a big bar on the board and got on top of that 50 in one jump. Scooted sideways, got on her nine day escalator and has been riding it up for the last five days. And even though that is a huge spread from $1.11 to $1.30, she punched it, went all the way up there and hit that 200 day SMA. That's a lot of determination, a lot of initiative, but she hit her head and she has pulled back and she's been falling hard today. The volume today was a little stronger than the previous days, but nothing to really get excited about. And our oscillators, they're not really exciting either. They're all pretty cool right now because of the back half of the day. But they are pushing up and they're on the right sides of their lines. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, she had a low bubble here, 84 cents. Very slowly, took about 10 days to get over here. Boy, did not wait for this to get too close. Very anxious. You can see this, right? She's jumping from way down here to get to that 200, and she wants through. Once she got through, she just took off. She's plowed on over. And today, after a few days of running, she has had a pullback. Our 50-day SMA has crossed our 200, and that's where it's settling right now. It isn't coming down to the 200. It is settling on that strong 50. Our technicals, they're still drooping. Things are coming down, but Come on, there's a lot of downdraft here, isn't there? Five day, five minute. Looking really good. She's on top of her 200 day this entire time until today. She really got high. That was too far away from any of the SMA, so she came pouring down hard and fast, went through every SMA, including the 200, but like a rubber ball in water, down underneath and then up on top and it floats. That's what we got going on here. She is trying to come back up. Uh, technicals, 
ooh, those are kind of all mixed up. There's some drooping, there's some sort of recovering. So there's a little bit of heat on the charts, not overwhelming, but we have a setup and she has come down hard, folks. We're down here at $1.10. Her original price was $10 and I don't know why she fell. I don't know if she had a reason to fall or if it was just market sentiment, but there's a huge ceiling of gain above it and she's got catalyst. She's bringing in this wood from Africa, cheaper than we're gonna be able to buy I would here in America. Wow, that just blows my mind. And they've got this new Co-Tech technology that dries wood. And I think they can sell that to other people and make more money there as well, right? So I like Keiko, even though the charts aren't on fire, they are set up and she's got a catalyst. We got another major exchange stock from the NASDAQ. This is FaZe, ticker F-A-Z-E, FaZe Holdings. Now, as I told you, this has one of those atypical breakout charts. You know, the 200 coming down with the price right up underneath it. But hers looks a lot better than the last one. She's also got a steady flow of news coming in constantly. And her revenues are growing. I think we need to look at this. So, Faye, she finished the day at about 65 cents with almost 3% drop today. So, what is Faye's about? Well, they tell us here that they were founded in 2010 by a group of kids on the internet. Faye's clan was created for and by Gen Z and millennials, and today operates across multiple verticals with transformative content, tier one brand partnerships, a collective of notable talent. They sell lots of clothes and products. Right now, they're reaching over 500 million followers across all these different social medias globally. FaZe Clan delivers a wide variety of entertainment spanning video blogs, lifestyle, and branded content, gaming highlights, and live streams of highly competitive gaming tournaments. They are involved with esports, they play games, they have teams. Its gaming division includes 15 competitive esports teams who have won 38 world championships. And they just brought out a piece of news where they have put together the very first all female esports team. So they are growing. There's a lot of buzz around this. And it seems that these millennials and Gen Z folks, they really stick together. They promote themselves. So it's growing rather quickly right now. So, what was the relative volume around the company today? Let's see. Oh, we got a bounce, don't we? Jumping from just a little over a half a million to just a little under two and a half million. Almost five times as much. Share structure for the company. Outstanding share count isn't too bad. 72.5 million. We've got no information here. We're not going to get it from the financials, so we're going to have to go to Google. Boy, this is almost like deja vu. We had 50 million on the last one. 58 was the outstanding, 50 million was the float. Well, here it says the float is 50 million, 48, 48, 18. Where'd that come from? Anything else here? All right, we're gonna toss that 18 to the side. I, I wish it was, but I'm not thinking it is. So close to 50 million, folks. That looks to be about what our float is. Taking a gander at her financials. At the end of 2021, they didn't have any revenues, but they had losses, $3.4 million. Don't forget those three zeros. Looking at the quarterly. All right, the last quarter of 2021, they had no revenues, nor did they have any the first and the second quarter of 2022. And then all of a sudden there's an explosion. Where did all that come from? $14 million. Now they did have to give up $10.4 million to keep only 3.5 million, but that's a big deal. Look at the last three quarters. They've been losing money every single time. Now, what I'm waiting for is that next financial. I'm expecting it to be bigger, and it should be out any day. I mean, it could literally be out tomorrow. It'll show up right here if they don't bring out a news press to tell you about it. It'll be a 10K or a 10Q. It'll be right there. Now, we got lots of current filings here, folks, and I'll be honest, I did not dive into all of these, but a lot of them can be really good. You've got your Form 4s here. These are for insiders buying and selling shares, the management. Your 13Gs and your 13Ds, these are new investors coming into the company who become owners. Then we got a couple of 8Ks up here, which I jumped into, and this one here is the one I have to bring to your attention. They have been reached 
out to by NASDAQ because they've been under a dollar for more than six months. So they've been given a deadline. They've got six months to get that price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days before September 19th, 2023. If they fail to do that, they're going to be down here on the OTC market. All right, that covers our filings. Let's take a look at that news. Now, they don't give us a lot of news here, but I know they've got a lot of news. This goes back to the beginning of the year, and we're not going to jump into any of these because they're all good. They're all helping the stock move along. None of them are catalysts on their own. But I want you to get a feel for what's going on here. This one came out in January. Faz Klein and Porsche announced multi-year partnership. Really, Porsche? This is one I jump into just out of curiosity. Then they had one in February, FaZe Clan and Bathing Ape announced limited edition merchandise collaboration. Since I lived in Scotland, I'm familiar with Bathing Ape. This is a clothing line and they charge way too much for it, but it is hot. Then also in February, uh, they promote their new energy drinks. I showed you uh, pictures of them, their Ghost Energy and their Ghost Gamer Pop. And as I also told you, they have put together an all-female professional esports team, first time ever. And FaZe Clan wins Intel Grand Slam and Counter Strike, record-breaking accomplishment as the first international roster to reach this milestone. So they've got a lot going on. They're into esports, they're into products, <laughs> they're making deals with Porsche. The money is coming in. I'm not real up on what they're doing but I like what I see so far. You wanna see something more? Let's go take a look at that chart. I gotta tell you, there are a lot of similarities between this chart and CACO, the one we just looked at. This is ticker FAZE, six month, four hour view. We have got a wonderful high bubble here of $24.69 at the end of August. And then we had a low of 36 cents at the beginning of March. And as you can see, we are now ready to break out. She has been underneath every single SMA all this time. And once the 200 got close enough, the gravitational pull took over. She just started riding up across all of the SMAs, broke the 200, has hit her head, and is pulled back and is sitting on that nine-day SMA right up underneath that 200. Look at our volume. It has been increasing these last few days, getting stronger and stronger. Our oscillators are warm, but they're not real hot. Our PPO is pushing up. It is starting to level out. Our MACD is over her line, and it too is leveling out. And our RSI up at 65 and leveling out. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. See, this is just like the last chart. She's under, she hit that low bubble. She's rolling around. 50 days has crossed the 200. She has pushed up for five days, hit a high today of 79 cents, and then pulled back, and she's landed on her 20-day SMA. She did not come all the way down here to her 50 or her 200. I'm liking that. Our oscillators, PPO is coming down right now, though it looks like she's trying to turn. Our MACD is still plunging down, and our RSI is at 51 right now. There was a lot of pullback today. She's just sort of leveling out after market hours. Looking at our five-day, five-minute view. <laughs> like I said, a lot of similarities. Predominantly has been over the 200 all of this time. Got way up high, too high, came crashing down through all of her SMAs, like deja vu, right? Underneath the 200, she's come back up and she's negotiating with it right now. Not a hot chart, but she's got a lot of heat, right? She is set up and she's got a lot of things going on. And what we're waiting for is that financial. That financial comes out and they said they'd done 18 or 20 million, something like that. I expect because of the way the charts heated up already, it is going to pop like popcorn and it is going to burst. So I would keep my eye on FAZE as well. Our next stock comes to us, Compliments of the OTC Market. This is ticker FDCT. Now, she's got a lot going for her. She's got that atypical breakout chart. It is hot. She's got lots of news pouring in about acquisitions she's making, and her revenues are going up. What more do we really need? <laughs> So FDCT, she finished today just a little over a penny and just under 1% gains. 
She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We call this the better tier. It's better because they have to audit their financials to be here. That makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy, they got both those green ticks I'm always harping to you about. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. The longer you're in a stock on the OTC market, the more relevant these are. If you're just day trading or short swings, don't worry about it too much. So what is this company all about? Well, they are a full-fledged fintech. They're involved with all sorts of digital money, investments, business. FDC Tech specializes in buying and integrating small to mid-sized legacy financial service companies. The company develops and delivers a full suite of technology infrastructure solutions to FX, crypto, and wealth management, and other future-proof financial sectors. So what was the relative volume around the company today without any direct catalysts? Dropped a little bit, about 25%. Went from 106,000 down to 73,000. Share structure for the company. Well, I actually looked this one up and it's right. Outstanding shares is 216 million. The insiders own a lion's share of it, 191 million, leaving us 25 million. So it's not a bad float. Financials for FDCT. All right, looking at 2018 to 2021, they're roughly doing about a half a million, give or take. Jumping up to 2022, something changed. They went from a quarter million the last quarter of 2021 to 1.5 million steadily for the last three quarters. And we got the same thing here. We've got one financial that is due right now. And as we can see, it is not yet out. We do have a 10Q here, but this came out in November. That is for September's of 2022, which we did see. We do have an 8K here. This just came out at the beginning of January. I did dive into this. It was another acquisition that they made. I say that because that's really all they do. All their news is about acquisitions or financials. That's it. And would you believe that this is three years worth of news? This goes all the way back to 2021. And all of them are about companies that they have been acquiring, including the very last one that 8K was talking about. They acquired New Star Capital Trading and their subsidiary. And back in July, they acquired CIM Securities. And all of these are companies they are acquiring. And that's what they do. They go around looking for these small, mid-sized fintech companies and just absorb them. And they're getting bigger and bigger and the revenues are growing. So I'm looking for the next financial here as well. Let's go take a look at that chart. Another atypical breakout chart, eh? So this is FDCT four hour, six month view. We got a high back here of six and a half cents in July, hit a low here of 0072 in November. And then this big run right here, this is that news we read, the one at the very top for the 8K, that acquisition, she jumped here from, let's call it nine up to 33. So you're looking at 350% gains, breaking the 200 on that news. Came right back down as sitting on her 50 day SMA and has been riding it out till she got close to her 200. Problem is she's ignoring that 200. She's tapped it barely here, barely there, and barely there. But where's the enthusiasm? Where's the burst outs? Where's the I'm standing on top of it and she slipped back down. We don't have any of that. She is underneath the 50 right now. The only thing I can say is she's on top of the nine. The volume, well, that's been decreasing. It's been falling. And all of our oscillators, well, they're in cots right now. Look, they're all flat, right? The only thing I can say is it's very close to the 200. It's not running away from it. And the 200 will continue coming down. If our price stays straight, the, the 200 will hit it and we'll be on top of it whether we like it or not. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, so we got a high back here of one and three quarter penny. She fell down to a penny. She's come up to her 200, which is pretty much just going straight across the board, as is our price the hard way, just rolling around that 200. Our technicals, they got nothing to say here. Everything is flat except our ADX, and it's confused because everything is going up and down, but really she's just going sideways. Looking at that five-day, five-minute view. All right, not a lot of trading going on. You got to remember, these are five-minute bars. Every hour, you got 12 bars, eight 
hours in a day. What are you looking at? 96 bars. And we got one, two, three, four, five. Five for today. So yeah, they could use some more volume. Absolutely. But she is on top of her 50-day SMA here. She had a thrust up and a pullback. But what's curious is my ADX, which tells me about trend continuation. Whenever the trend changes, if it's going up, this goes a direction. If it changes and starts going down, this bends. Well, there's no bend here, right? That's a solid straight line. And what does this look like? It looks like it went up and came back down. Yet, we don't see a bend here. So this is telling me that this up thrust is still pushing up underneath the covers here. That's what it says. But everything else is flat. Still in their cots. Nobody's doing anything. So once this financial comes out, I have high hopes. I believe this is probably going to jump. I think their financials will probably be a bit stronger than the last ones. Just a feeling, but it's worth a watch. FDCT. It just occurred to me when I finished that third stock, all three have got the same catalyst the financial. I mean, they've got other things going on supporting them. The revenues are growing. They got news coming in. They're making deals. But it is the financials we're looking at right now to be the catalyst. And there are a lot of companies that have financials coming out right now. You're going to see bounces if they have good financials. And that's a good place to do your DD. Keeping up with financials. Companies come out with them every quarter. And if you've got a company that's got good progress and a hot chart, you could make some bank. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya.